welcome to Check It Out, Comrade, an indie game podcast where every two weeks we bring you two indie games and tell you what we like about them. This week, oh my god, I messed it up already. It's okay. I'm Nick Lauber. And I'm Gary Butterfield. <laughs> and this week we're doing Castle in the Darkness and Tonight Dies the Moon. Yeah. Um, let's get started. Nick, tell me what's cool about Castle in the Darkness. I will indeed. Um, Castle in the Darkness is a, uh, a retro platformer um, published by Nicalis. It was done by uh, Matt Kipp, who was the, the lead artist on uh, Binding of Isaac Rebirth. And <laughs> it shows. It is a very cool, uh, low-pixel aesthetic. And a um, a very, I feel, probably like Dark Souls-inspired uh, gameplay, where it's just balls difficult and and like very much about like learning patterns of enemies well, um, probably probably closer to like um like what dark souls was inspired by so like probably excuse me closer to like castlevania yeah it's definitely yeah. definitely got a lot of castlevania elements to it um but yeah so it, it's it's got a lot of uh hidden secrets that are really cool to, to explore um apparently although i didn't get far enough there's a, a wider array, array of uh, weapons and, and powers you can get up, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, it's just a, a super solid game that probably would have sold like hotcakes if it was released in the NES era. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is like a post Shovel Knight release mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like um, this kind of people making the NES games they wish were out. Yeah, you know, feeling to it. Um, I don't know if it's quite as good as Shovel Knight, or at least like mm-hmm. not as complete. Yeah, um, the mechanics are a little bit more shallow. I think I agree. Um, yeah. And, but it is like a really, really fun Castlevania game. Like it is, you know, really fun bosses that are, you know, like Nick said um, about pattern recognition. Um, it's got like some kind of Metroidvania elements to it. Like they're in some nonlinear exploration. Yeah. Um, towns, uh, you know, people that to upgrade your weapons, like merchants and stuff like that. They're really cool. And we're kind of the dark souls. This only really comes from uh, the checkpoint system. Right. Um, and the kind of glee it takes in you dying. So like similar to, you know, like a thousand one spikes or something like that. Like there is a death counter mm. that you get, like when you die and you get achievements for dying a certain number of times and, and everything like that. Like it is meant to be super difficult. Yeah, um, it is. It is definitely, definitely very difficult. Um, so I, I did not get very far in this game, uh, <laughs> because it's super hard and I didn't realize the time dedication it would take to get like a significant chunk into it. Um, but what I have played of it is like, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, I, I like that d- despite it being super simple mechanics and stuff that, uh, bosses will, there's like the dark souls run up to the bosses mm-hmm. that you have to like, you will fuck up on by accident. Just like right before the boss, you're like, I have, I have to fight this fucking, I have to run back to the checkpoint or I have to go fight this boss at half health. Wait, I already died last time at the first hit. So what the fuck? Yeah, it is, uh, uh, a- it punishes rushing, yeah, in the in that same way, um, in and not just in the boss run ups, but all the time, <laughs> like uh, similar to, to how Castlevania is like very thoughtfully laid out, mm-hmm. um, you know, enemies kind of cover each other, yeah, um, hazards are meant to overlap in a way that there is kind of a specific way to get through it without it feeling it's not like I want to be the guy style cheap, no. it's just you just have to figure it out, um, and and stop and think a second, you know, before you kind of blindly rush in right um there are meat walls in it that i've run into like sections where um i feel like i'm not prepared to do this yet yes um and i have to go back which is again i guess it is very dark soulsy and is pretty cool like i always like it when a game communicates you know that way rather than just like a literal wall yeah i definitely hit one of those too um pretty early on there's like a castle i entered where everything was way too difficult and i was like all right go back and find a different route because this is not where i should be yeah it's a, it's a really good kind of expression of like because the power ups you get, the weapons you get, nothing that I found so far in the game has been that creative. It's just like a really well done execution of it. Yeah, you know, um, it doesn't innovate the same way I think Shovel Knight does, um, where Shovel Knight feels like the best NES game, but maybe draws inspiration from like Ducktales, right? You know, or something like that, like a game with more kind of interesting movement and stuff. And uh, the power ups are much more interesting in that game. Um, the uh, this kind of takes it's more generic power ups more generic movement and everything but they also they did a really good job concentrating on the level design yeah level design you know? is super solid yeah like if this had been on the nes like this would have been a stone cold classic i agree yeah um uh, i don't i also didn't get that far into it just because it is so hard um i really like it like i beat the first major boss which is the gigantic knight 
um, who's a huge sprite and really impressive looking. Yeah. Um, but I didn't get much further than that because, again, I just died a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I, mean, I, got, I think I got a little bit further than that, but not much. Um, I, I would like to spend more time with this game. It feels like it's going to be a serious time sink, though. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I I feel like it would. I would love it to be on like the 3ds eShop or something like that. That'd be super. Like it rad. would work really, really well with the the checkpoint system and the kind of frequent deaths. Like throwing in a couple, you know, runs on the bus or something like that would work really well. Yeah, I let's um, hope that happens. That sounds like yeah. a really good plan, actually. That would be that would be a good good fit. And the game's uh, really really well reviewed, and uh, people definitely dig it. I so. agree. So good job, Matt Kip. We, yeah. we enjoy or uh, Cap. Sorry, Matt Cap. I, I love seeing a game like this that's made by one dude. Yeah, you know more or less like like he had you know resources at his, his disposal, mm-hmm. um, working with Nikolas and everything. But like that's just very, you know, this is just a guy who just decided to make the game he wanted to make. Yeah, just wanted you to know? make us like the NES game he wished he was playing. Yeah, and and Nikolas is like, what what can't they do <laughs> at this point? Like how how in what ways are they not amazing and doing just incredible stuff? Yeah, they're definitely on a on a real solid streak. Um, yeah, I heard they yeah, I heard they had some rocky beginnings with like castle story stuff and things like that. But man, he's a uh, they they've been killing it lately. So oh the the cave story, uh, I think the the original there was like uh, stuff about one of the one of the ports and like how they I don't remember. I think there there was funding stuff and also asset changes that people were not fans of and. Are you, did we use, you said Castle Story. Do you mean Cave Story or is there oh, another game yeah, called no, Castle Story? No, you don't you're, know right. About? you're right. Cave Story. My bad. Because the, the port of Cave Story is really good, I thought. Um, there's a 3D port that they may have also handled that people didn't like. I think that's the one I'm referring okay. to. Because the, the, the Cave Story Plus like 2D version is like the definitive version of that game. No, that one is really solid. You're right. Yeah. And then they're responsible for that too. So like, And then obviously Isaac and, and you know, they uh, Rebirth specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they've done they've done good work. So, I agree. Yeah. So let's talk about Tonight Dies the Moon, which, uh, as we've uh, fully expressed uh, a couple times now on this episode, um, we're big fans of Tom McHenry, mm-hmm. who uh, Gary has some some little ties to. Uh, I mean, he... I met him through, like, he is friends with my girlfriend, but right. I met him through the game first before I knew him. <laughs> right. Um, so because I, I played Horse Master before I met him in person, and we've hung out for the grand, a grand goal of one evening. So <laughs> Okay. But in case just, anyone's going to accuse us of collusion. Yeah, exactly. Just just want to let the, the gators know that uh, th- there yeah, is, <laughs> there is some light ties here. <laughs> don't feed the gators with us. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're both big fans, though. If you go back to a really early episode, we did a uh, horse pastor. Yes. And uh, and he just he just makes uh, some super solid twine games, which are um, text text adventures um, that he publishes for free on his site. Um, this one's actually not published on the site because it was part of a game jam, but yeah, um, um, the, the Antho jam, which was put together by, uh, Zoe Quinn and, and her boyfriend, Alex, mm-hmm. and it, it was a themed, uh, game jam around, uh, fifties retro nostalgic sci-fi. Nice. Um, which is very cool. Like that's an awesome theme. Good theme. And, uh, it, I haven't played anything else from the, the game jam. No, but it's all neither. available if you go to, uh, amphalojam.com. Yeah. Um, and you can you can find all this stuff. Um, but I was most interested in this um, just because of the pedigree. Yep. Because Tom's a cool guy and this uh, definitely fits the same sort of themes that he published in the other two games we've looked at. So um, Tonight Dies the Moon is, uh, as I said, a text adventure. Um, it takes place in the year 2000. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the general uh, setting is that the moon has been uh, populated for a while now by um, kind of some uh, refugees from Earth. And since then, the Earth ha- has been at war at the moon. Yeah, well, it's, it's real. It's real tongue in cheek. Yeah. And it's, it's real. The, the war is real one sided. Uh, yeah. Earth, Earth, Earth keeps fighting the moon. The moon keeps trying to live on despite being bombarded constantly. And uh, and the game's real neat in that you can play you can play as either a Denzian of Earth or a Denzian of the Moon and get to uh, complete different stories in this setting. Yeah, the uh, it's it's kind of two games. Like mm-hmm. um, the Earth campaign or what have you is much closer to what we've seen from Tom before, um, where it is kind of an emotional story. Um, there are one of the things that Tom does a lot with his Twine stuff that I think is interesting, and this is essentially what power cycles was um is trying to do stuff with twine that it's not necessarily made to do right um so there's like this little like shooting segment there's like a part where you're at this like boring dead end job and everything like he kind of plays with the the format 
of it and kind of shows in this dystopia that he's made what life is like for an earthling if you play as somebody who who is a moon denizen then it is like a sim um it is much there's there's more mechanics yeah. to the game in, the, in that respect and that's something i haven't really seen him do before that is pretty neat um in the the spirit of disclosure though like and this is interesting and we'll talk about it during the spoiler section um i didn't think there was an ending to that and i guess there is yeah yeah, there's there's two different uh, endings I found. It doesn't get doesn't get too far, but we'll talk about that um, in a little bit. So, uh, on top of you know his his themes of trying to to uh, do things with twine you're not supposed to, he also uh, builds a lot of uh, kind of strange uh, dystopian commentaries. Um, the Earth side's really neat. I have uh, uh, when you when you started off, you have like a uh, a birth name but one of the very first things it asked you is uh is what is your uh i forget what they what he what he called it but it's it's you can change your name on a whim uh and it's essentially used by everyone as basically their twitter status um where your your current name which you can change it i think it might be current name actually which you can change at any time people will use to like reflect their current emotions it's or, it's your uh, your change name yeah your change name yeah and you can uh uh the the character you're playing as kind of makes fun of people for um uh changing their name for uh sponsorship corporate uh corporate interests have paid them to change their name to to advertise their brand mm-hmm. um and I, I thought that was a a really really fun thing for twitter to become your name that was a, a neat theme yeah or or like um passive aggressively changing your name yeah to things um that, that's like one of tom fix strengths is this kind of uh wry talent for dystopianism <laughs> yeah. um, which comes like very clearly and you can feel this in Horsemaster and you can doubly feel it here comes from like barely contained contempt for his job <laughs> it feels like uh, which I really appreciate as somebody who has mostly had jobs I've absolutely hated <laughs> yeah. um, almost exclusively and uh, that's that's really fun and the game he's just a really sharp writer like it's very funny yeah. um, and, and this is no exception to that I mean I will say like for me the the moon section which i thought this was kind of part of the point and i'm really interested to have you kind of spoil this for me because mm-hmm. it felt like you know hey it's the moon it's this big glamorous thing the play was really demoralizing and boring to yep. me in yep. a way that i was sure was intentional absolutely but i thought it not ending was part of that uh, and it's it's yeah. curious to me that that like i'm just kind of surprised like i gave up i realized because when i thought i figured it out like oh this just doesn't end this is the point is paralleling life on the moon with life on earth as both being these kind of like sad sack drone like existences yeah with, with that said I, I think uh it's not even really worth spoiling uh the ending to that because essentially at some point and i don't know how long it takes but it takes a while um it basically stops you and and like it comes as tom's voice as the creator of the game is like you know you could do this forever but i think i will i will save you that and say like this is just gonna go on forever that's essentially what he says at at the end of the moon section is i i could let you go at this forever i don't know why you'd want to yeah that's 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 really cool yeah um there there is uh one alternate route to that and that is managing to buy yourself a ticket to uh to earth which i i played a second time just to to maximize myself and get that ticket uh paid Mm -hmm. for and um that one um you know, it, it's it's essentially just a quick blurb about your your person, uh, or your character going, getting on a ship and um, and becoming a, a citizen of of the U.S. Um, basically by saying they're no longer like uh, turning themselves in, no longer an enemy of the Earth, and that allows mm-hmm. them to become come back and become a citizen of of Earth. So it it's uh it's used as propaganda. People who who come back to Earth from from the moon as these um you know war criminals turning themselves in hmm. so because i mean the, the idea being like you're when you're the earthling you want to get to the moon mm-hmm. and the idea that like i thought i like and i guess i maybe i did where like i kind of figured out where it's like oh both these people want what the other person has yep. and what neither of them have is very good yep you know um which is you know that's an interesting thing interesting thing to explore in like a sci-fi milieu um milieu and uh yeah so the, very very cool like it is uh that is what these kind of little games are good for i think it's like i'm expressing an emotion or an idea yeah and uh, he's really good at that the the dual dystopia where both sides think the grass is greener is pretty cool 
Yeah. It's a, a neat theme I haven't seen before. Yeah, it's very cool. Like, uh, so, you know, again, full disclosure, like I know him and I have a vested interest in him succeeding, um, but he doesn't make any money from this. Yeah. Like, it, you know, it is free. So, uh, but I, I would recommend people check it out, especially if they've checked out the other stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, I, I don't done. know him and really like these games. Yeah. So. so you can, you can trust Nick, even if you can't trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and you can trust me because, you know, why wouldn't you? Like it is, I mean, I don't need to rant about this for like the thousandth week in a row, but like, why would anyone be like, yes, I want to be friends with people who are cool and creative and smart. <laughs> so <laughs> you sue me, like, it, like you know. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to, exclu- because I cover games, I'm going to exclusively like limit myself to being friends with people who don't make things. Yeah. That's dumb. Very dumb. Um, yeah. But, uh, what, what's not dumb, Castle in the Darkness and Night Dies the Moon. I agree. Play, play mm. both these games. They're very yeah, good. And, and like all of Tom's games, like Night Dies the Moon is really short. Yeah. Um, which I appreciate as a thing that like, I like a game that it's like, like a movie or a t- TV show where I can't get invested in something it's long term but i can just take a bite and have a complete experience in uh in one one hour or so yeah i played uh i played the earth side on a lunch break at work so yeah that's really fun so <laughs> play them out um so yeah we said that that one's part of uh the anthology jam um but you can f- i'm sure you can find a link on uh tom McHenry's site which is noncanon.com uh canon spelled c-a-n-o-n not like the shooting one Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you should also follow him on uh, Twitter at Tom McHenry because he yeah. posts a lot of really funny comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess uh, I guess we'll call it there. It's a little bit of a, a short episode, but oh, we warned uh, you. Well, yeah, we warned you. We yeah. warned you short episodes were coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, because we're getting ready for Bloodborne, or I'm I'm at least getting ready for Bloodborne. Yeah, I, I don't get to unfortunately. Yeah. Well, maybe once I once I have Bloodborne, I, I'll feel comfortable loaning you my PS3, and you can play Demon Souls. <laughs> Fair enough. So you, you can be a couple generations behind. <laughs> yeah. Which, which you should play. Um, I know, I know. But yeah, Bloodborne, and then also I just moved and started a new job and all that jazz. Yeah, so, lots uh, of stuff going on. We apologize, guys. Yep. Um, so if you want to suggest uh, games for the show, you can go to duckfeed.tv forward slash contact or go to the Check It Out Comrade page, which is duckfeed.tv forward slash comrade. Yep. And, and uh, you yeah. can also find us on on the regular social media outlets, uh, facebook.com slash check it out comrade or Twitter at comrade podcast. And if you've got some cool short games, uh, let us know because uh, we could use them. Yeah, and uh, and your ratings and reviews are always appreciated. Of course, yeah. iTunes, uh, let other people know that we're awesome and uh, we'll really appreciate it. Yeah, tell your friends. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. Uh, we'll check you next time. Yeah, talk to you later.